Let us adore. Let us adore. Be ever living God. Be ever living God. Render prayer. Render prayer. Unto you. Unto you. Who spread out the heaven. Who spread out the heaven. And establish the earth. And establish the earth. And whose glory. And whose glory. Is manifest throughout all the earth. Good evening, good evening. Welcome again to the midweek Bible class, Bible study for the Southside Church of Christ here in the city beautiful of Orlando, Florida. We pray, hope, and trust things are well with you and yours. Thank you again for carving time out of your arduous schedule to be a participant in this sacred study of God's holy book, the Bible. We're now, right now, while this class it's being aired, we're in the midst and throes of the 76th Annual National Lectureship for the Churches of Christ at the Hyde Regency on International Drive here in Orlando. Uh, things are going well. We need to keep up our prayers that we finish strong tonight and tomorrow. Beloved, um, last week we launched into a two-week series. We talked last week about getting more out of Bible class. Uh, we rehearsed and regurgitated some key points that would be helpful, useful, beneficial to you and I as we try to endeavor to learn more perfectly what God's will and word says. And so we discussed on the virtues and value of getting more out of Bible class. I want to encourage you again to be an active, regular, a tender Bible class, either online, excuse me, or in the sanctuary. Sunday school, 10 a.m. every Sunday at 4701 Raleigh Street. Adult classes taught by our elders, our shepherds, and classes for all ages all throughout the auditorium 
And soon and very soon, we'll be having our new Converse, our second principles class uh, that I'll be teaching in the vision classroom really soon. Uh, but love, so that kind of segue and catapulted us into tonight's lesson, which is last week we talked about getting more out of Bible class. Tonight, let's talk about getting more out of preaching. Getting more out of preaching. Um, we teach. That's what we talked about last week. It's a necessity. It's an imperative. But in the church, we teach to explain. But we preach to proclaim. Hear me now. Teaching is done to explain the Bible. Preaching is done to proclaim the Bible. Teaching is explanation. Preaching is inspiration. Again, teaching is for you get your explanation. That's why you can ask questions, make comments, lend credence to the class. You can get an example or an explanation for what you don't know. But when preaching starts, it's the proclamation of the word. It is inspirational. It's your weekly uh, pep rally talk. You get your energy and effort from the proclamation of God's word. It is when the book, the Bible is expounded upon and tools are given to make application in our lives. You'll see throughout the Bible, scripture again and again validates the virtue and value of preaching. Paul declares in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, Paul said, the preaching of the cross is to them who perish foolishness. But he goes on to say, but unto us, the preaching of the cross is the power of God. For those of us who are saved, it is the power of God. Paul segues into 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23. He said, we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews, he says, it's a stumbling block. Unto the Gentiles, it's foolishness. But unto us who are called, it is the wisdom of God. He's using that terminology, preaching. Last week, teaching. But the proclamation of the word, the preaching of the word, the public oration of the word is what Paul's talking about. Paul even declared in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, Paul said to Timothy, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. I love the Bible. It's so instructive. He's writing to us preachers now. Preach the word. Don't preach philosophy. Don't preach feelings. Don't preach self-help and transcendental meditation. Don't preach luck and Four leaf clovers and butterflies. But Paul said, don't preach uh, prosperity. Preach the word. And then that in season, out of season. That just simply means you preach it, preacher. When they want to hear it, preacher. Preach it. When they don't want to hear it, preach it. And then he says, here's what preaching all do. It all the rebuke. Sometimes you got to beat them down. You got to rebuke people. And then he says, exalt. That's when you got to lift them up. That, that's a healthy balance in preaching. Sometimes you exalt people with the Bible. Sometimes you correct or beat them down with the Bible so they become obedient. And he said, how do you do it? With all long suffering and make sure you preach doctrine. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The essentiality of baptism. The uh, five articles of worship, the weekly communion, those are essential things in our doctrine and in our faith. Acts chapter 20, verse 7. The early church lends credence to the importance of preaching. And we're going to talk about how you get more out of preaching. The early church in Acts chapter 20, verse 7, a scripture we use regularly and often to solidify our 
first day of the week communion. It says in Acts 20, verse 7, upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together, when, when did the early church and disciples come together? Upon the first day of the week. And he said they came together to break bread, the Holy Communion. Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on tomorrow, and continued his speech unto midnight. That, that means, and it says in the same text, Paul was long preaching. He preached at midnight. Matter of fact, a fellow fell out the window and broke his neck. It's in Acts chapter 20. Uh, but preaching is synonymous with what goes on the first day of the week. Of course, I got more Bible for preaching than teaching. But both are found regularly and substantially in the book. So on the first day of the week, you make sure there's some preaching going on along with the other four articles of worship. You see, beloved, I often engage... This is an explanation here in what we call expository preaching. Now, I talked to you last week about teaching. There's textual teaching. That's when you just read the body of the text, the book, the chapter, and the verse, and you go line by line, verse by verse. And then we talk about topical teaching. That's when you just pick a subject matter, and that may take you all over the Bible to gain and ascertain information about the topic. So there's textual teaching or preaching, and then there's topical teaching or preaching. Brother Leonard often engages in the textual, uh, what we call in the preaching circle, expository preaching. That is often, and I just find this more effective, and the people I learn most from, and the better preachers to me are what we call expository uh, preachers. That means you read the text, you explain the text. You drain the text. What's in the text? You'll notice I very rarely jump all over the Bible. Those verses I read to you are probably almost 100% of the time of the verses that I'm going to stay with and stick to. And so we call that expository teaching. So tonight, beloved, in our remaining moments, let's talk about how we can get more out of our preaching. That three points or alliterations I'll drop on your desktop for consideration tonight. Uh, let's look first at the benefits of preaching. Paul declared to the church at Rome, chapter 10, verse 17, Now faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Preaching is when you hear, not talk, not discuss, not ask for the things you hear from God's um, book. And that's called preaching. We are blessed in life. That's just not a Christian component. We are blessed in life by what we hear. That's why men are often in trouble. Men fall in love with their eyes. Women fall in love with their ears. That's why you always have more women in church than men. Men want to see something. Women want to hear something. So the Bible teaches our faith is built by what we hear. And what we hear ought to be, Paul said, the word of God. That's where our blessing lies. The benefits of preaching come from what we hear when the word is preached. And people that have a problem with it, it's not often the subject that the man is selected, nor is it the preacher himself. You must listen with an attentive ear, attentive ear rather. You can't be distracted. You shouldn't be on your phone. You can't be checking your Facebook and your Twitter account. You can't be texting someone or talking to someone. You should not be in the hallway or the uh, foyer or keep running to the bathroom. Often people don't get anything out of the preaching or get little are less than they could get because they don't listen attentively. Listen to the preacher. Reading is good. Study is good. Teaching is good. But preaching, the proclaimed word of God, is best. There are three things that ought to happen when I teach or preach you and others preach to you. We converse the word of God to you. That word ought to convict you and then prayerfully convert you. 
three C's, converse, conversation, conviction, con conversion. Conversation, conviction, conversion. That's preaching at its best. But it's laid at more than at the feet of the preacher. You have to be an active participant. Listen attentively. It's more fruitful and productive when we all in this thing together. It's your weekly uh, pep talk before we play football games. We often had a pep rally and the captains of the team would make a speech and then the coach would make a speech before any major game or event. You need a pep talk, a pep rally. On Sunday morning, the first day of the week before you go out to engage that week in the game of light, life and all the events uh, that come along with that. You need your pep talk, your word from God. The man of God stands there and dissimulates and proclamates that word and gives you the energy and the effort you need to make it for another week. That preach word, what is the benefits of it? Uh, it also can help you avoid apostasy. It keeps you from the danger of drifting to and fro from strange winds of doctrine. I've never seen a day when people will latch on to so many foreign and strange doctrine. As Paul said, toss to and fro. And that's because they are not in the assembly. They hear God's word dissimulated so they can rightly divide it. So everything sounds good. Everything sounds okay. The word is so, the world now is so secular. There used to be a time in the African American precinct, everybody went to somebody's church. But now people, they're not as in tune, they're not as spiritual. And so I would uh, encourage you tonight that one of the benefits to avoid apostasy and this dangerous drift and neglect of the word is for you to listen attentively. That's one of the benefits. Paul said in Hebrews, or the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews 2, verses 1 through 3, that we ought to give more earnest heed to the things we have heard. That means when you are being preached to and you're being taught, heed it, listen. Uh, give an attentive ear to it. The second thing I want to talk about tonight, first we just talked about the benefits of the preaching. Uh, let's talk about the different kind of listeners we have. Um, the effectiveness and the efficiency of the word is often determined by the listeners of the parishioners. Every preacher has different gifts and anointing and talents. Uh, I like to think after 38 years, I've been relatively successful. Uh, one of my gifts is probably if I stand up in front of an audience, you're probably not going to be very bored. I'm not saying I'm a great preacher or the best preacher, but I have been blessed with the skill of captivating attention. Uh, the animation and the dramatization and the... Um, ability to keep one's attention. That varies from preacher to preacher. But you have a role as a listener. Tonight, it goes a long ways in the effectiveness of the sermon and the preaching is your role as a listener. There are different kind of listeners according to the Bible. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1, the Hebrew writer says, there's some people in the church who are dull of hearing. Uh, they hear, but they're dull. They hear, but they don't get it. They are distracted when they hear. They don't uh, in tune, in touch. They're not on one accord. And then Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 4. Uh, I'm rather, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verses 3 through 4. Paul said, there's some who listen, but they have itching ears. He said, the time will come, and that day is now, when men and women will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, heaping to themselves teachers having itching ears. That's when you want to hear what you want to hear. And when you don't hear what you want to hear, or predetermine 
what you think you want to hear, then you dismiss summarily what you're being taught and preached about. Itching ears. Some have dull ears full of wax. <laughs> Need to get a good wax job in your ear. Others have itch in the ears. You want somebody to scratch. Uh, instead of hearing the truth, you just want to hear what makes you feel good. I said to the church Sunday in my sermonic soliloquy, some people rather climb a tree and tell a lie than stay on the ground and tell the truth. The preacher is charged with giving you the truth. Some people are more affected at that than others, but you need not to have dull hearing and you need not show up with itching ears. Be like the Bereans. Don't reject the truth. Go home and codify the truth. That's the kind of listener you ought to be. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. The Bereans were more noble than those at Thessalonica. For they would go home after hearing the teaching and the proclamation of the word. The Bereans go home and fortify and codify and substantiate and validate, affirm and reaffirm what they've been taught when they heard the sermon. That's the kind of listener you and I should be. Thirdly and lastly tonight, you know how you can get more out of your preaching? Let me tell you, the third point is here's how you get more. You listen. Now, there's a difference between the art of listening and the act of listening. The act of listening, you only need two ears. Okay? The act of listening, that's why God, through Jesus, was also say, Hear, O Israel. He wasn't talking about the act of listening, he's talking about the art of listening. Be attentive, be in tune, be in touch. Read along. Many people, we have a house full on Sunday. Everybody's in the act of listening. No, I want you to mature, all of us, to the art of listening. You'll get more out of preaching when you engage in the art of listening, not just the act of listening. Preaching, this is how you get a lot out of preaching, more out of preaching, is to understand the valuable part of service that preaching is. Singing, Praying, giving, and communion, all valuable. But you can't have worship or church without preaching. It, it, it always disturbed me. It, we're past that now. People with uh, Sunday nights or people on a trip, uh, they come back, they, they, they want communion. As if, oh, that, that's okay. I, I, we provide communion for people. Well, what about preaching? Right, so when I, we would go to a nursing home, and we do uh, go to people's house, sick members. I would give a short sermonette. Then we commune, sing and pray, and offer them to give. But you have to preach. It's valuable. Actually, it's invaluable. Preaching is the main course of the worship. And, and you know, I, I'm just at the age and time now, and I understand. Everybody wants to think what they do is important. I, I'm not against that. All five articles are valuable and important. But you uh, lost your everlasting mind if you equate that to preaching. And that's not self-serving because I am the preacher. It's the truth, so help me God. The preaching of the word, the foolishness of preaching God chose, is how people are saved. That's how they are corrected. That's how they are rebuked. That's how uh, they are exalted or encouraged. Preaching is where doctrine is disseminated. Yes, folks, don't you ever devalue what God puts value in. Don't you ever de-emphasize what God emphasizes. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Jesus was a preacher, an itinerant preacher. You know what that means? He was not theologically trained. Uh, I've been blessed, thank God, to get some theological education. But I did a lot of good preaching for a lot of years without formal theological training. Now, you, you need to go to school and you need to be trained to be a preacher. You need to learn theologically the truths of the Bible, the dispensational nature of the Bible. You need to learn the ability to disseminate that information with clarity and simplicity. But 
Jesus was an itinerant preacher, the greatest man to ever live, the founder of the church, the founder of Christianity, the savior of the world. What was his main job? He was a preacher. I was thankful to trod the path of Jesus preaching while I was there in Israel a couple of years ago. And he preached all over uh, that tiny uh, area of Palestine called Jerusalem in Israel, walking and talking the cobblestone streets there. I'm proud to be a preacher because guess what? Jesus was a preacher. You can get more out of preacher preaching when you see the inherent value of preaching. You don't have to be great or famous to be a preacher. Preaching makes one great. Aeneas Crenshaw, one of my mentors, said, uh, many years ago I heard him say he wouldn't stoop to be president of the United States. That's such a great role that preachers have and been called to anointed to do. I need you to listen. You want to get more out of preaching? That's our third point. First point, the benefits of preaching is what you hear builds your faith. De facto to say what you don't hear will detract from your faith. And then we talk secondly about the different kind of listeners. Some have dull hearing, need to get that wax out your ear. You're often distracted online. I hate people in church who have their devices out. Yes, if you're reading your Bible online on your device, fine. But why you are even chatting with people and Instagramming and Facebooking, somebody in the back, girl, did you see him? Look at them shoes the song leader got on. Look at that tie, brother. That's not the time. Worship is not the time for that. You need not have dull ears. Get that wax out your ear. And you don't need to have itching ears. Come to church to get what you want instead of what God would have you to have. No, you need to be noble in heart like the Bereans and even go home and validate, substantiate, affirm, reaffirm what you've heard from God's book during the sermon. You need also to get more out of preaching is to listen all the way through the sermon. I can't tell you the times I've said something. And people tell me later, yeah, they ask me a question. I say, I don't know, they, they must mentally check out. Like even in my opening salvo, I'll make an announcement about this. People didn't hear it. I don't know where they go. I don't know where they check out. I see you didn't hear me say that. No, you didn't say that. So just listen. It's online. I used to have CDs and cassettes. Now we, we have it on YouTube or Facebook. You can listen. And then they go back and listen. Yeah, you did say that. Yeah, I did. But that's because you're not listening from start to finish. You're doing segmental listening. And all the maximize to get the most out of, your, out of the preaching. You need to listen from the start to the finish, from the first to the last. Let me conclude tonight by telling you how you get the most out of preaching in this arena or area. See, here's our job, the preacher's role. They train us theologically. There are three things we do. Uh, we introduce the subject, the biblical subject, with the text. That's what we do. Secondly, we present the main points or supporting arguments about the subject we're talking about. And then lastly, we conclude with a summary of what we just talked about. So we introduce the subject. We then present main points and supporting arguments of what we're talking about that day. And then we conclude with a summarization of the subject matter of the theological point we tried to get over. And you need to listen to that, apply that in an effort to be pleasing to God. Read along, that's another point. Read along with the preacher when he quotes a text. Another and last point, look at the preacher. Concentrate with your mind. Don't let it wander. Don't nod off. Look, it's rare people do that with me because I'm not a kind of a nod off kind of guy. But there are people on Sundays, they're sitting there, they nod off because they checked out. And if you check out, your mind will wander or you will nod off into the abyss we call sleep. Oh, beloved, tonight, what a joy when an ex just said, the getting more out of our preaching. We talk first about the benefits of preaching. We talk secondly about the different kinds of listeners. And then lastly, 
we gave some points on how to get more out of the preacher. Look at the preacher, concentrate from start to finish, don't nod off, don't wonder, read along, understand the art of listening versus the act of listening, and see the in, uh, inherent value of preaching as one of the five articles of worship. Thank you tonight, beloved. Praying for you as you pray for me. Be there Sunday morning, bright and early, 10 o'clock for Sunday school, 11 o'clock for worship. God bless you. God keep you. It is my endeavor and yours for all of us to get more out of our preaching. Good night.